I feel like I'm about to have a vomit of the mouth. But try to follow me, okay? Today's video is kind of impromptu. Like, me talking right now is totally off the top of my head. I kind of planned out what I wanted to do for today's video, but then something literally came to me. And so I just sat down and was like, I need to record this right now while it's on my mind. So if this ends up sounding like word vomit, you will never see this video. But I think I know what's gonna happen in this conversation. But first of all, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Gabrielle. I also go by Gaby, and here on the channel, we are Miss GCH. And wow, you guys. <laughs> How about I just get to it and like describe how we got to this moment where I'm literally yelling at y'all into my camera. So for a couple weeks now, actually one of the subscribers gave me this idea. I think she gave me this idea. I don't remember, but we're having a conversation in my DM. And it came down to me talking about reacting to my relationship videos from last year. If you've been following this channel for over a year, you know about my relationship journey and like, just in general like how we even got to that point of me being in my first relationship at 25 right so we were talking about it and i was like yeah i want to do a reaction video like a lot of you guys a lot of my new subscribers by the way we hit 4k omg actually 4100 i've been delaying this celebration for some reason but we hit 4100 and the reason i'm bringing that up is because a lot of you guys are commenting now on a lot of my older videos and i'm getting a lot of subscribers from like videos from last year some from this year obviously but i've just been like really fielding a lot of comments um, and replying to people from videos from last year and like with Safe Single and Left Behind and my relationship videos and like a lot of the earlier stuff. And I was like, wow, I feel like I need to react to this because this is what a lot of you guys um, seem to have subscribed to me, you know, to hear more about. So I was thinking I need to do a reaction video to my relationship and to Safe Single Left Behind and just, yeah, just reflect on what that time period was, right? So that's what I've been thinking this whole time. But I didn't really know what I wanted to say to you guys. I know, like, you know, I talked a lot about my relationship status and all of that side of my life last year. And then this year, it's kind of been like, mom's the word. And a lot of y'all have pointed out that you noticed and I should have realized you all would notice as much as you have, but yeah and it's not because nothing has been happening plenty of has been happening child 2020 oh gosh like there's definitely a lot of learning and a lot of everything that has happened but i just didn't really know what to share i didn't know if it was the right time to share again i wasn't really sure exactly what i wanted to say um i started watching the the uh, true life 25 never been kissed video <laughs> can't believe that was like just last year that I posted that but I was watching it and like trying to see like what am I gonna comment on and like um I've been getting a lot of comments on the grieving my sing singleness video and I was like okay what can I comment on from that and it was just like I don't want this video to be an hour where I'm reacting to all these videos like those videos are like 20 plus minutes long each. So I was still kind of stuck and have just kind of been pondering all day like, okay, I need to record this video, but I don't really know what I want to say. Get to your point, baby. Okay, so as you can see, I'm wearing the Love is Magnetic um, Belief in Fatherhood. This is part of their Love, the Love collection that they released like a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Limited time collection, so unfortunately if you want this and you love the way this looks, I'm sorry. It was only open for like a week. I purchased the Love is Magnetic um, sweatshirt. There was a ton of stuff you could have purchased. I also got the Chocolate Baby stickers. Maybe I'll insert a little clip of that. But um, yeah, this is what I decided to purchase mainly because if you like follow me on Instagram, you know I'm always shouting out like Belief in Fatherhood. I know they probably think I'm creeps at this point. Like Yvette and Glenn probably think like, who is this girl from Ohio that is so thirsty to always post this? I can't help it, okay? When somebody blesses you and they work really hard to do so and a lot of what they do is for free, I just feel the need to like make some noise about that, okay? Um, I decided to go with the Love is Magnetic one um, mainly because I love the color and like how soft. I wanted a sweatshirt for the fall. But Love is Magnetic specifically because he did this episode um, probably last year sometime where like if you follow Belief in Fatherhood, he used to be a rapper. I don't want to say used to be. He still is. So he essentially makes his own music to tie in the storyline of his videos of his family's vlogs 
creative genius just truly genius okay but he created this song called love is magnetic and um he did an episode where he essentially like it started with like his wife homeschool so she was doing an activity with magnets with the kids and then it turns into this story about like you know his tough relationship with his younger brother and how like growing up they didn't really have the best relationship he still comes around to see his kids and like whatever and so he's talking about like the positives and negatives of love and how it all comes together and then literally it goes into his song love is magnetic in the background uh, it's the positives and negatives it all comes together and it just, y'all, I watched that episode probably like twice back to back because it literally blew my mind to watch the story come together to really tell the message of love is magnetic. Because when you first hear that, it's like, what does that mean, love is magnetic? Episode blew my mind, okay, essentially. So I had to get in the comments because I know how hard it is for YouTubers to really create and feel like they have the space to create what they want to and not just try to compete with the algorithm and the hashtags and trends. So the fact that he took the time to like really put that into video form for us, like it really blew my mind. So anyways, I get in the comments and you know, make a comment similar to that. And it got pinned on that video. We actually ended up kind of going back and forth a few times in the comment section, just, you know, him saying like, thank you for getting it. And I'm like, trust me, I get it. And the, and the message hit home. All that saying, you know, that was why I was like, I have to get the Love is Magnetic one. Like that, that's the one. I got this in the mail a few days ago, maybe earlier this week. So I put this on thinking nothing of it, except that I'm gonna probably end up taking a photo today to post on social media to hype them up for the love collection y'all it was getting kind of late and I still haven't recorded this video but I have this sweatshirt on and I'm working really hard because I suck at social media photos these days I suck at selfies I used to be so good at these things but so it's taking me forever to try to get a photo that I like and while I'm taking these photos I'm thinking about again what am I gonna say <laughs> ah, it's so funny how it all comes together I'm like, what am I gonna say in this video as I talk about my relationship and my reaction to like a, a year and a half later? And something says, dummy, look at your shirt. Actually, it started with my mom called me and she saw my shirt and asked the story behind it. So I'm explaining the story to her about like positives and negatives and you know, everything I just told y'all. And she was like, wow, we had a moment. And then while I'm taking the pictures, I'm like, duh. Like, this is the message that you should be sharing. Like, this is the story of your relationship and what you need to tell the people. So, that is how we ended up in this moment where I'm yelling at you guys. <laughs> because I'm just so, I know exactly what I need to say. So, hopefully it translates well. So, those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I started off in, I think, January of 2019, last year. And I made a video called True Life 25 and Never Been Kissed. And it started off this series called Save Single and Left Behind. And I really just felt this strong conviction to share with the world my journey with relationships and how I was 25, had never been kissed, never had a boyfriend. Like, let's play the opener of that video. I'm 25, I have never been kissed. Oh my God, yeah, never been kissed, never had a boyfriend. Never, I mean like barely can I say I've been on a real date. And I mean obviously, <laughs> I'm a virgin. Wow, okay, so I said that out loud on the camera to everyone, cool. Yeah, so I just was really open about my journey of being a single Christian woman that for 25 years has not experienced a lot of the familiar things that a lot of girls, women, seem to have experienced by that point at the regular timeline. So I just felt like, you know, this is my story, it's unique, it's been kind of like a burden for me. At the start of last year, the Lord was really like, literally challenging me so hard in the area of romantic relationships and just my negative relationship with that concept and how relationships had become an insecurity for me and had become fantasy for me like I couldn't see myself actually in a real relationship and you know I had these 
ridiculous expectations and all the things. The Lord was just really challenging me out of nowhere, literally, out of nowhere. Sorry if you hear my neighbor's obnoxious dog while I'm talking. I really was like walking through my mindset of relationships with y'all, with my YouTube family. Like y'all got to really see that unfold in 2019. And then of all the random things to happen in 2019, I go and decide to get a boyfriend. What? <laughs> huh? I know. I know. At the same time, pretty much, that I started that Safe Single Left Behind series, a man comes into my life. And I can't even say comes into my life because he had been in my life for 10 years prior to that moment. And yeah, if you don't know the story about that, <laughs> might want to go check out that video. Um, He did escape the friend zone after like nine, 10 years. And we went to high school together, all that jazz. Literally, if you watch the video, you know our story. It'll give you everything you probably want to know uh, <laughs> as I share this with you. So yeah, I go and get in this relationship. And I don't know what I was expecting, you guys. Like, looking back, I think, like, was I ready to be in a relationship? Like, you would think. I waited 25 years. I was a virgin. I was all of these things. Like, yes. Like, it just made sense, right? Now for me to be in a relationship. And I don't know if anyone is ever ready. You just don't know until you're in it. And you know. Because everyone's journey is different. Like, you don't know till you know. Like, there's all this stuff on social media and everything about, like, how to get ready for a relationship and blah, blah, blah. And what you should be doing in your singleness so you're prepared and ready for a relationship. And blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, I'll be scrolling by them posts these days. Matter of fact, I've unfollowed pretty much anybody <laughs> in every page that will post something like that. Because I just, they're lying. Like, they're lying. In retrospect, no, I wasn't necessarily ready for a relationship. I didn't know what I was getting into. Like, I didn't know, you guys. Like, I've seen relationships, TV. I've seen them in my real life. I know what people have gone through. I know other people's relationship stories. But you just don't know till you know. And so being in this relationship has challenged me in all the ways, <laughs> all the ways, okay? Like, I would say definitely at the beginning, um, if you remember those videos, I talked about how I was literally grieving my singleness and it took me a while to really adjust to being a girlfriend. Like, I really felt like I was trying to be something and my boyfriend had to constantly remind me like, you don't have to be anything but you, like that's, why we're here like you don't have to try to fit some girlfriend mold like just be just exist and i was like wow a concept just be just be me okay um so it was definitely an adjustment period but there was definitely a sweet spot where it was just like this is exciting and this is you know all the things like just a rush especially once the love was solidified i mean we have been friends for so long that we said i love you kind of early we had known each other so long and it was just kind of like oh wow this just makes a lot of sense <laughs> um and so it was definitely a love honeymoon i guess period and i definitely think we go in and out of honeymoon like i think that's one of the first things that i had to learn about relationships is like I mean, I knew it's not always gonna be the honeymoon period, but people kind of say like, there's a honeymoon period and then it's just gone. And that's not true. Like, I, I can't say that that's been the reality for us. Like, I think definitely there was a honeymoon period, a super strong one. And then, you know, as you're growing and changing and the relationship is growing and being challenged, you know, honeymoon phase kind of relaxes a little bit, but then it comes back. And then like, it, it's kind of like that dance, like that. I would say that was more so what we've experienced and are still experiencing. It's just like like the wave, like it, it comes and goes kind of thing. But the main thing I want to say y'all is that this relationship has challenged me and grown me up so much. And I know a lot of you think I'm like super mature and all of that. And yeah, that's all nice and dandy, but like everybody got something, okay? Everybody got something and I think Prior to this relationship, I had a bit of pride. 
Can I say that? Will y'all judge me if I say that? But I think I had a bit of pride that came from my singlehood. Um, yeah, almost like my poop don't stink. You know, I just had that like, you know, knowing that I struggled with certain things for sure, but just, you know, thought that I was going to master this relationship thing and that like, you know, so to hear somebody call out, you know, because they see, because they're very close to you, they see some areas where it's like, oop. And so for those things to be called out or touched on or challenged, it was like, excuse me? <clears throat> what? What? Like, it was very uncomfortable. And the main area, y'all, that has been, oh, so challenged for me is the area of communication. That is one area in relationships where, man, I avoid it. I think I avoid it. I'm not very good at it. And so with this relationship, I learned very quickly that this is an area of weakness for me and an area of immaturity. And that some of the ways that I would kind of fall into of like, you know, just choosing not to speak or having an attitude rather than communicating like what the issue is. Like there are just definitely some things that were exposed that I was like, oh, this is ugly. I don't like the idea that the, I've been harboring some ugly in there inside of me. Like it exists. And what are you gonna do about it, sis? Like, are you just gonna leave it like this? So definitely there was a learning curve. There still is a learning curve. Another area that has been significantly challenged for me in the area of relationships is the idea that, not the idea, it's the reality <laughs> that I somehow over the years have developed this mindset that if something's wrong or if there's conflict or disagreement or something like that or not seeing eye to eye that that automatically means it's over. <laughs> I have done this in friendships. I have done this in a lot of areas and it has become most apparent in the area of my relationship. So how does this play out to make it make sense for y'all? Essentially when it would come down to a disagreement in my mind, that means, oh, I guess we're not meant to be together because we're having a disagreement. Y'all might think this sounds irrational and I'm crazy, but I know there's other people out there that do this. Like, if it gets tense or whatever, oh, okay, then that just means this wasn't supposed to work. Instead of communicating through it, communicate, I would always get down to a conversation about breaking up. And that is a dangerous, very ugly, very unhealthy, almost like a poison to any relationship. If every time you'll have a disagreement, the conversation then becomes about leaving or breaking up, that's gonna, that's gonna, it's gonna harm your relationship. And that was the biggest wake up call for me. So it, it was something that was very uncomfortable and very challenging for me. And we were able to sit down and communicate through it, talk through it, see our way through the maze. And y'all, when I tell you, when I saw the exit of that maze and that conversation, it was just like, wow. Oh, so you can like actually just talk through things. And actually it happened in my relationship my romantic relationship, but also in a friendship recently where, you know, the same thing was happening. I was like, dang, is this relationship going to be over because of, you know, some communication issues? And then we took the time to sit down and communicate through it. And it was like, oh, like relationships just have points of conflict sometimes or times when, you know, heads butt and you just communicate. And then you learn and grow through that communication to be better and the relationship is better on the other side, not throw it away and run. And it was like, oh my gosh, a concept. <laughs> wow. So all that to say, I could have never known last year when I was posting Safe Single Left Behind, I had no idea I was gonna be in a relationship. Then when I got in a relationship last year, I could have never, never predicted how it's unfolded over the last year and a half. All that I've learned, all that 
I was challenged in all the ways that I would be better, that we would both be better in 2020. Yeah, to be honest, I thought I had the cheat code, honestly, before I started this. I was like, you know, you know the, the cliche statements as a believer, like, put God at the center of your relationship. What does that mean, actually, practically? Who knows? And like, yeah, happily ever after. Like, sis, <laughs> if I could have talked to my 2019 self child, there's so much you don't know. Like, honestly, while I was watching back some of those videos in preparation for this, I was just like, oh, mm. And no disrespect to myself. Like, that's where I was then. But just thinking like, girl, you just have no idea what is ahead for you over the next year. But there was no way to know other than to have lived it. Um, so maybe, you know, over the course of time, I will go more in depth because I feel like I've touched on a lot of things, but you guys are probably wondering like more in depth stories about that. I mean, I'm sure, especially in the purity realm, whoo, child, there are some things to be said, okay? <laughs> Nonetheless, bringing it back to Love is Magnetic, Y'all, that was the biggest thing I learned over the last year and a half, is love is magnetic. It's the positives and the negatives, and it all comes together. That's what love is, like, and I think back to that Say Single Left Behind video where I was honest that, like, my idea of love had, was tainted, it was unrealistic, it was very fantasy, it was a lot of things, except for what it should have been. But like, I have learned so much that love is, it, it's just as much about the negatives as it is the positives. And I don't mean the negatives like abuse or, you know, toxic behavior, not that. But the negatives as far as like the highs and lows, like there will be highs and lows, there will be, you know, victories, there will be some, some failures. And all of it works together in love like there's no way around it you can't just like try to put two positives together two positive magnets have you ever tried they don't they don't go together they push away so we can't have all positive or all negative and think like that's going to be love like no love incorporates it all so that's why i jumped on the couch and was yelling at you guys <laughs> for the first minute to two minutes of this video because it made sense for me, like, wow, duh, love is magnetic. So shout out to Believe in Fatherhood because you all made my video possible today. <laughs> you all brought the message home for me and I really hope I brought it home for you guys. My relationship is very different now than it was at the start of 2019. My relationship with relationship and love is very different than it was in 2019. But all of it is growth. All of it is a mixture of positive and negative. And to be honest, y'all, I still to this day don't think I would change any part of my journey. I think it was all a part of the story specifically for me so I could grow in certain areas and also share that testimony with you guys and allow you all to walk through it with me so that hopefully some of you can grow too. So yeah, I think there's more to be said for sure specifically from me and him about our relationship. And at some point, if you you know we get the opportunity we'll record maybe do a reaction to our you know love story video and just man where we were then and where we are now <laughs> so if you are currently venturing into a new relationship your first relationship whatever and you are you know nervous you don't really know what to think what to expect did i do the right thing did i not one just keep on living and two recognize that love is the positives and negatives and it all all comes together so that's it you guys i hope you really enjoyed this i hope it was helpful for you as always that's the only reason i share my testimony is because i hope to impact you all so if it made a difference for you i hope you will subscribe turn on the notification bell stick around for future videos again thank you to all 4100 and something of you who have chosen to stick around and be a part of this family i am just i'm so grateful for what the lord is doing through my life and through y'all because y'all bless me just as much as I hope I bless you. I hope you'll check out Belief in Fatherhood. They have the, I think the Fatherhood collection coming up in a couple days or a couple weeks. I really hope you'll check out their YouTube channel and choose to support them and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!